just how many times we've seen Philip Forsberg make game-changing plays. And it's this time of the year when you need that the most. How much of an impact would it make to get a healthy Philip Forsberg back? He's been out a while. Well, it's a huge impact because uh, they got started on this stretch. Uh, I go back to mid-March. It was a Monday afternoon game in Tampa, oddly enough, and they were missing a lot of players. Forsberg was healthy at that time and playing, and they just they played great in that game, and they played hard, and they found a way to win, and I thought that started to kind of give them momentum moving forward. And so Philip Forsberg... In these type of games, they're tight games right now. Your goalie's playing well. He's giving you a chance to win. I know those numbers without him are really good. But you get him back in the lineup, and you get into a 1-1 game late or a 2-2 game. And Jackie, he's a guy. You don't have to. You don't need me to tell you. He can make a difference. He's a streaky scorer, and he can make plays to make a difference in tight games. So I'm sure John Hines is hoping he gets back ASAP. Yeah, you know why that record without Philip Forsberg over those 16 games is 11, 4, and 1? I know. Because, because UC Soros has been <laughs> playing like a man freaking possessed, yes. okay? He has been easily their most valuable player over this stretch of good hockey, and that's no disrespect to Philip Forsberg, who is their best forward. Uh, but his numbers, I mean, we talked about this each when it was he came back from injury and, and he had great numbers over like a five game sample size. This is a legit sample size now where UC Soros is a player who can not only be the reason that Nashville gets into the postseason, but that could be scary in a seven game playoff series if he can play the way that he's been playing because he has been really, really good for Nashville. And, and I think his play is kind of been what has really sparked things for this Nashville Predators team, as you brought up in our meeting today. Yeah, and you know, Tony, I would also say about him, I think that Lindsay's comment, when she talked about John Hines saying, I don't know if I've seen a guy play this well for this long right. stretch. I mean, I've been watching this game a long time, too, and, uh, you know, yeah, we've seen great goalies over the years, but this is a pretty long stretch of very, very high-end play, so I'll be curious, can he continue that high-end play? I guess only time will tell, but boy, oh boy, it has been a great stretch, and Jackie, you're absolutely right. That's why the Nashville Predators are where they are. Plus, of course, I think they've been working really hard as a group and feeding off that good goaltending. We know that Tyler Sagan's been working really hard to get back on the ice, and that takes us to www.twitter.com on the internet. Anton Hudobin in net. Four stars versus Carolina tonight. Lots of game time decisions, including Klingberg, Mike Heikas says. Tyler Sagan is, quote, not far off, unquote. But they still want him to be very comfortable with decision to get back in a game. How impactful could a healthy Tyler Sagan be? He's been, he's been out the whole season. And Jay, I give Jackie credit. Jackie said this earlier today when we were talking about it. We haven't seen a healthy Tyler Sagan in a long time, yeah. like years. Yeah, hey, listen, I mean, for the Dallas Stars, just to get a fresh body back at this point, I mean, we talked about it earlier, right? <laughs> Not more than two days off going back to the beginning of March, right? I mean, this team has been just grinding, 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 guys in and out of the lineup, guys playing, I'm sure, through a lot of uh, aches and pains and bumps and bruises. But they found a way to get back into it and stay in it. And the thing was, they had that six games against Columbus and Detroit. They had to make the most of that. And they did. They won five of the six games. They got, uh, I guess it was 10 of a possible 12 points. So if they can get Sagan back in, and we know, we talked to Mike Heike yesterday, and the idea is Sagan is now have to make the decision. He has to feel comfortable that he's ready to play. And I think that's smart because there's no reason to put him out there if he's not on board and not ready. So, Jackie, for me, if they can get him back, even in a little bit of a small dose, to give them a fresh body in their lineup, that would be great news. Well, that's the key The key phrase there is fresh body, because even Hints, right? Like, Hints is, has yep. been great for Dallas when in the lineup, but I never know if he's playing or not. He's in right. one game, then he's out, then he's in, then he's out. He's, like, on and off like a light switch. So he's even playing, obviously, through a nagging injury as well. But I think, you know, for Tyler Sagan, I just keep going back to this postseason run that saw the Dallas Stars go all the way to the cup final. Tyler Sagan took a lot of heat during the postseason for his lack of offense 
offensive production. And we find out when the playoffs are over, and there was speculation in the bubble while this was happening, this guy was playing with not one, not two, like three injuries during the playoffs last year. And he was finding other ways to sort of contribute to the Dallas Stars game in terms of doing things away from the puck and trying to be a good teammate and all that sort of stuff. But my point is that if he can be fully healthy and actually play yeah. his game and, and, and the way that we have seen Tyler Sagan produce in the past, that is a huge boost, not for just for Dallas down the stretch, but in a playoff series because they were able to get to a cup final with a very unhealthy Tyler Sagan uh, taking up one of their roster spots. If he can be healthy, I think that he is an X factor in a series and he's someone that provides you know, just more offense for a team that's lacking a lot of it right now with no Radulov in the lineup either. So Dallas has dealt with, with so much adversity to this point. I think the hardest thing for Dallas, if they get into the playoffs, is going to be overcoming this two months that they've had yeah. to play every other day, literally, uh, just to get in. So they're, they're going to be a tired group when they do get into the postseason. But I guess, you know, you said it, Eve. Tyler Sagan will have fresh legs <laughs> once he gets his game legs back. Like, he'll at least be Yo. mentally, like, ready to go.